differentiate 1 over x with respect to x from first principles. Now, you can look at an earlier video in this playlist. The video is entitled Derivative of x to the power of n. And I went through the derivative of x to the power of n from first principles, where n is any number. And uh, you will see in that video that it's nx to the power of n minus 1. So first principles was used to prove this result. So you could apply um, this result to the particular function here, which is 1 over x. 1 over x can be written as x to the power of minus 1. It's 1 over x to the power of 1. And applying this result with n equal to minus 1, we get minus 1 times x to the power of minus 1 minus 1. So we get minus x to the power of minus 2. We can write x to the power of minus 2 as 1 over x squared. So you could apply the result of this video, but that would mean doing the general case, you know, the derivative of x to the power of n in general, and then plugging in minus 1. However, we can just do this directly. I'm going to call this f of x. You can call it dy dx, or y if you like. Then, you know, we can go through the whole procedure, get Newton's quotient. That means work out f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. This is the slope of a secant to the curve f of x equals 1 over x, which passes through the point with coordinates x comma f of x, and a nearby point which is coordinates x plus h comma f of x plus h. I won't go through the picture of this. You can you'll see that in other videos. Um, so you need to just memorize this and apply this. This is called Newton's quotient. f of x plus h is got by replacing x with x plus h. Then we subtract f of x, which is 1 over x, and we have to divide this by h. Now we'll also have to take the limit as h tends towards 0 of this quotient. That's our derivative. So we write the two fractions on top as a single fraction. We get a common denominator. We multiply x plus h by x to get the common denominator. Then we divide x plus h into the common denominator. It goes x times. Multiply x by 1. Then we have a minus sign. Then we divide x into the common denominator to get x plus h. x plus h times 1 is x plus h. And we have a minus sign here. So you can see now that uh, we get x minus x minus h. So we get minus h over x plus h times x. And this is divided by h. But dividing by h is equivalent to multiplying by 1 over h. And we c these h's cancel, so we end up getting minus 1 over x plus h times x. So finally then, to get the derivative f prime of x, or if we like, we can call this dy dx, we get the limit as h tends towards 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So we let h go to 0. Well, if we let h go to 0, we get minus 1 over x times x, or minus 1 over x squared. In part 2, we want to find the equation of the tangent to y equals 1 over x at the point 2 comma a half. Now I'm calling this f of x instead of y. So this is the f of x axis here. It's the x-axis, of course. Here's a graph of 1 over x. It's actually in the shape of a hyperbola. And we want a tangent at the point 2, comma, a half. So 2, comma, a half is a point on this curve. If you plug 2 in for x, you get f of 2 equals 1 over 2. We want a tangent at this point. To get the slope of this tangent, we just get the derivative of the function at x equals 2. The derivative is given by minus 1 over x squared, so it's minus 1 over 2 squared, which is minus 1 quarter. So the slope of this line is minus a quarter. As you can see, it has a negative slope, in the direction it's going in. Um, just to remind you of what slope is, if we pick any point on, on this line here, increase x by 1, then y will decrease by a quarter. Now to get the equation of the line, we use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We just need a point and the slope of the line. So the point on the line is 2 a half. So the point is x1, y1, and the slope is m. m is minus a quarter. So we just plug everything in here. A half for y1, a 
minus a quarter for m and 2 for x1. Multiply both sides of this by 4 to get 4y minus 2 equals minus 1 into x minus 2. That gives minus x plus 2. And I've brought everything to one side, so we get 4y plus x minus 4 equals 0. As a check, you could see, you could check to see that the point 2 comma a half is on this line. If you plug a half in for y, you get 4 halves or 2. Plug 2 in for x, you get 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Let f of x equal inverse tan of x over 2 and g of x equal inverse tan of 2 over x for x greater than 0. We want to get the derivative of f with respect to x and the derivative of g with respect to x. Now, in an earlier video, we looked at the derivative of inverse tan of u. I'm calling it u. We saw there that the derivative, which I'll call dy du, differentiate y with respect to u, is 1 over u squared plus 1. This result was proven in an earlier video. You can also look up this in tables. The derivative of inverse tan of x is 1 over x squared plus 1. Uh, so we just have to apply the chain rule here. So basically what I've done is replaced this u with x over 2 in 1 over u squared plus 1 squared. We don't need a square there. So this is u. So there's your 1 over u squared plus 1. And then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by du dx. So this here is du dx. So we differentiate x over 2 with respect to x. Well, this is just a half x. The derivative of a half x with respect to x is a half. So we, what we have here is dy du multiplied by du dx to give dy dx. See that du's cancel. But dy dx is just f prime of x. Squaring this out here, we have x squared over 4. It's multiplied by 2. So we have a quarter x squared times 2. That's a half x squared. And then we have 2 times 1 is 2. On top, we have 1 times 1 is 1. So that's f prime of x. Now let's look at g of x. g of x is inverse tan of 2 over x. So to get the derivative, well, we just look up this formula in tables. We replace... Two, uh, we replaced this thing here called u with 2 over x. It'll probably, this will be written as x usually in tables. In tables you'll see as 1 over x squared plus 1. So we just replace x with 2 over x. We have to square it. Add 1 here. And then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of 2 over x. What's the derivative of 2 over x with respect to x? Well, it's actually 2 times ln of x. Um, see this 2 here, that 2 can be taken out in front. We just have 2 multiplied by the derivative of 1 over x with respect to x. I'm sorry, I'm mixing this up with the integral of 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. Actually, we had that in, in B part 1. So we have... Um, g prime of x is this here multiplied by the derivative of 2 over x which is 2 times minus 1 over x squared or minus 2 over x squared. So squaring this out here we get 4 over x squared and 4 over x squared is multiplied by x squared. So x squared times 4 over x squared is 4. x squared times 1 is x squared and multiplying on top we have minus 2 by plus 1 is minus 2. In part 2 we want to show that f of x plus g of x is constant. Now what does that mean? It means that f of x plus g of x is equal to some number. We, we can call that number c. And that number never changes, no matter what x is. So if we plug, say, 5 in for x, get inverse tan of 5 over 2, that would be f of 5, then get g of 5, put in, get inverse tan of 2 over 5. Add these together, we would get some number. And that number would would be the same no matter what we put in for x. So whatever value we got for x equals 5, we will get the same value for x equals any other number, like say x equals 11. Inverse tan of 11 over 2 plus inverse tan of 2 over 11 will give that exact same number, whatever it is. Uh, I won't work it out now. So f of x plus g of x equals a constant means that f of x plus g of x is the same number no matter what values we put in for x. Now how are we going to do that? I mean it's not enough just to plug in numbers. I mean, I mean one way, which is not the correct way to do it, because we can only show it for some values. We can't prove it for all values of x. But let's just um, 
actually I will do this now. Let's get inverse tan of 5 over 2 plus inverse tan of 2 fifths. To three decimal places you get 1.571. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Because in calculus that is differentiation or integration. When we're dealing with trigonometric functions we are assuming that the arguments or angles of those functions are in radians. Um, well, this is an a this is an actual answer in radians here, because we're getting inverse tan of five over two plus inverse tan of two fifths. So um, we're looking for an angle actually. So the angle we get is one point five seven one radians. Now we should get the same value no matter what we put in for x. So here I worked out f of five plus g of five. So the constant must be 1.571 if f of x plus g of x is indeed constant. Then it must be equal to this value. So if you try any other value for x, you should get 1.571. So let's say we, that's f of 5 plus g of 5 worked out. Let's say we get f of 2 uh, plus g of 2. Well, that's going to be inverse tan of 2 over 2 plus inverse tan of... 2 over x is another 2. So we have inverse tan of 1 plus inverse tan of 1. Well, what's the inverse tan of 1? It's this number here, and we have to add it on another inverse tan of 1, or just I just multiply this by 2. You see, we get 1.571 again. As a matter of fact, we could do, we could get the inverse tan of 1 in degrees. So we have inverse tan of 2 over 2, 2 over 2 is 1, and you will get 45 degrees, and then we add on another 45 degrees. So this angle is 90 degrees. So even if you're, you, you can actually have your calculator in degree mode if you like, because um, we're getting the inverse tan of something. So we're getting an angle. We're not getting the tan of an angle. If we're getting the tan of an angle, then the angle is assumed to be in radians for all our results in calculus to be valid for trigonometric functions. All the derivatives and so on have to be are only valid if the angle is in radians. But here we're just getting the inverse tan. Um, so no matter what value you put in for x, you'll either get 1.571 radians out or 90 degrees out. But of course this is not a proof. I mean I've just shown it for x equals 5 and x equals 2. It's supposed to be true for all values of x. f of x is plus g of x equals c for all values of x. Well, it's actually x greater than 0. Um, OK, and I've only done shown it for two values. So here is what we do. If indeed f of x plus g of x is equal to some fixed number c, and we saw that um, if this is true, then c is 1.57 radians or 90 degrees. Then if we differentiate both sides of this, differentiate f plus g with respect to x, and we must differentiate the right-hand side, we can do that to an equation, differentiate all both sides of the equation, then we haven't changed anything. We're applying the same operation to both sides, in this case differentiation. So the equation is still balanced. Well, we have a sum of functions here, so we get the sum of the derivatives. The derivative of f with respect to x can be written as f prime of x. The derivative of g with respect to x can be written as g prime of x. And that must equal the derivative of c with respect to x, but c is a number. When we differentiate a constant with respect to x, we get 0. So if f of x plus g of x equals c is equal to some constant for all values of x, then the f prime x plus g prime x must equal 0. So this is what we need to show. We need to take f prime of x and add it on to g prime of x and see if we get 0. Well, here is f prime of x. I just copied this down here. And here is g prime of x. Do we get 0? f prime of x plus g prime of x. Well, if we multiply this fraction above and below by 2, what do we get? Well, we get, we get 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times this here. Uh, 2 times a half x squared is, sorry, 1x squared. And we have 2 times 2 is 4. So we get 2 over x squared plus 4 minus, well that's 0. Okay. This fraction is equal to this fraction. 
So we get 0, uh, which tells us that f prime of x plus g prime of x equals 0, which then tells us in turn that f of x plus g of x must be constant. And in part 3, we have to find the value of that constant. Well, I've ar already done that. Just pick any value of x you like and plug it into f of x plus g of x, and you will get 1.571 radians, or 90 degrees.